Hello, welcome to the Gunshot with me, John. Today we're going to be looking at the Cough Scepter. This particular one's in 28 ball. So, when you get one, they come in this lovely box that says Coughs on the front and has the website on the side. You open her up and they have this kind of egg box effect big piece inside and you have your stock and action, your barrels, and a little box filled with chokes. And these guns will come with a five set of internal chokes and one of the multi every thing choke keys, which is quite smart. It's a little bit better than the others, it's got a holder in the middle so you can get a little bit of leverage if you need to. Not that you're not taking your chokes out every day. But the box really doesn't make anything else tingle in me, but uh, it does come with a nice firearms ownership manual. <clears throat> So, at the back of the gun we have this large rubber recoil pad, and that has an absolutely exquisite wood to plastic fit. However, looking at it a little bit more carefully, you'll see that they've, they've done a bit of an old trick, is that they've actually taken the pad in at a taper. Does this actually matter to the way it shoots? Probably not. <clears throat> However, it's one of those little, little quality things that's worth mentioning, but you have to really be picking holes thus far. The pad's quite hard, but you know, the hard pads actually do give you a bit of recoil protection, they just don't seem to unless you put a slow-mo cam on them. Moving on to the stock, the stock is a grade 2 Turkish walnut, which is obviously where these guns are from, so they do get always Turkish guns have a nice piece of wood on, which is quite smart. Moving on, the checkering is extremely fine. It's my only little bugbear with a gun at this price point, which is by the way £499, so they're not an expensive gun. There's a chance they're not going to be the best looked after and perhaps a coarser checkering might have been a better idea. But the fine checkering is good, it's all laser done and it actually is done very, very well. All the lines of the stock as well, the actual stock manufacturer and design is really good. There is absolutely nothing to, to worry about. They also do a, a junior version that has a shorter pad and a shorter stock overall. Moving on to the action. Wood to metal fit is pretty poor, but it's not something you actually have to worry about in particular. The action, you have a silver action that's been laser etched with a really nice scroll, <laughs> scroll engraving. And actually from, from afar without touching it and getting all a bit personal, it looks amazingly good quality. Unfortunately, it's not very deep, but that's just by the by. The top lever is black and the safety is a manual safety with built-in side-to-side selector. It's a very e happily printed a 4SA, U for under and O for over. The trigger is non-adjustable and you have a black trigger guard to match your black top lever that all ties into your black of the barrels. So these three are all matching. You have polished trunnions, which is very well nice, nicely done. And actually the action to barrel fit is also is pretty good for a cheap gun. In fact, it's, it's very good for a cheap gun. Moving on to the forend, the forend does match the stock, that's always nice. Whether it matches perfectly, it doesn't really matter, but they match very well. You have a little push button on the front here, you push that in, and the lever will fall out a little bit like an old Winchester, and the forend will just push off. Push the top lever over, and the barrels will just fall out very, very simply. The ejectors are timed on these little cams on the side, they're very very good, they're used by a lot of Italian makers and they work exceptionally. Moving on, your forend loop actually is where this gun starts to be a little bit clever, has got an adjustable section here so you can adjust how tight your gun opens and closes via this little pressure pad here. That's really nice, um, I think anyway, I think that's really smart and a lot of people are moving into that now to save the old school methods of how to make your gun feel tight. The barrels are multi-choke, they do do various barrel lengths, they come with a 70mm chamber in, the, in this particular gun, I think they have a 3 inch on the 410 and a 3 inch on the 204 as well, but only a 70mm on this one. Multi-chokes, parallel rib, the little brass bead sight, and the rib has got this kind of strange, 
whatever it's called, ellipse checkering, which is, it's nice, it looks good when you look down it, and that does count for something. The barrels are quite heavy for 28 ball barrels, but we're not going to get too far into that. And you have coughs printed on your action there. When you look inside the action, there's a little bar there. If you push the top lever over and push this little piece down, that will take the pressure off the top lever so you can return your top lever to zero. it's very well put together uh, there's very little to worry about the design is actually quite sound there's a couple of little bits that perhaps are intriguing but that's okay that's absolutely fine again in a 500 pound gun you're not worried too much about the engineering of the thing and that just goes in So how does she shoot? Well, not particularly like a 28 ball should, I suppose is the answer. What I found a very strange combination was the lack of weight and yet the extreme presence of weight in my left hand. Once I sort of learned to shoot it a little bit, it was fine, but certainly it's an odd sensation and my left arm is now tireder than my right arm is. And it took a lot of moving around, that's all I'm gonna say. My suggestion would be to you, if you shoot maintained lead or any of the sort of hand speed methods, it's probably not a good idea to shoot it as standard. However, if you're more into your Bumbella Beat Bang sort of style and you find yourself shooting erratically, the weight in the front end of this gun would slow you down a little bit. So there is positives and negatives. And it shot very well, but I can't imagine shooting all day with it and feeling joyous at the end. However, for 500 pounds, you've bought yourself a brand new 28 bore slash 4 tan slash 20 bore slash 12 bore over and under. It's not that bad, is it? So that was it, the Kof Scepter SXE 28 bore over and under. It was a really pleasurable gun to shoot and actually play with. Too much left hand weight, I will say for a 15th time, but generally a really nice gun. <clears throat> Thank you very much for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time.